Hello from the John Black Forest. I've just wrapped up my yearly waterfall workshop here and the participants have just left and I still have maybe two hours till it's getting dark so I thought I'd just use the time and record a little tutorial for you and I go through my workflow for photographing rivers. So we'll start by finding compositions, fine-tuning them, we we'll talk about equipment, how I take the photos and maybe even some post-processing. So yeah, let's not waste much more time. Let's go. So the first part of photographing rivers is finding the right subjects to photograph. So looking for foreground interest, looking for rocks or little currents, water rushing around rocks, that's something I could use as foreground later. So I'm using the time now walking along the river and looking for such foregrounds. And on a day like this, where you have yeah, a thick cloud cover, so it's perfect to photograph rivers and waterfalls, I can really take my time for this scouting part. So the river here, the length of the river, which is interesting, it's like three, three and a half kilometers in length. So I take my time to walk the complete length and look for interesting foregrounds. And then I come back to those later. But first I take my time to find what's yeah, looking best as foreground, what I want to photograph. Because sometimes you can be overwhelmed, there's so much, but yes, some of the areas are not so good as others, which you see maybe later on the river, and then you don't have the time. So if it's like this, I first plan in the time to scout the complete length of the river if it's possible. If the light's changing faster, if you have clouds moving by and you want to have the cover of a cloud, then I might go in right away if I find something interesting and photograph it. But as I said, on a day like this, I first take my time to scout the complete length and yeah, look for the interesting stuff to photograph later. And yet yeah, till now I haven't found this yet, so I'm gonna move on and yeah, look for it. So once I found something interesting, it's usually a little hard to really say if it's interesting or not standing at the side of the river. So the next thing is really to also take a closer look, so to get in, but I usually don't take the camera yet. So now it's still exploring and I do though still without the camera. So what I would do now, for example, for those, for this area here, um, I saw those rocks here and the water rushing around it. And from top here, it already looks quite interesting but I'm not sure if there's a photo. So to, to know if there's a photo, I have to get down there and get low to the rocks and see if there's actually some composition, if I can make something out of this. So this is basically the next part, part three or four, I'm not sure. So let's not number it. The next part is going down and looking if there's actually a composition. And that's what we're gonna do now. And for this, yeah, I'm careful not to trample anything of the vegetation here, so I'm trying not to stamp around on this moss or grasses. And yeah, once I'm down at the river, what I usually do, I leave my backpack right next to the river so I don't take it because those river or rivers can be treacherous. If I fall, I don't want to submerge all my equipment. So I'm just going in there without, uh, without the camera equipment, but I have waders. And this is the first equipment tip, which you've already seen maybe in my first waterfall video. Waders are really great if you want to do rivers and waterfalls because you can just get in and stay dry. So I'm gonna get over right into the middle of it and see if there's actually a composition. And I don't need the camera, I just use my cell phone and Looking through the cell phone, this already helps to see if there's something to photograph. So let's see how deep this actually is. From top, sometimes it doesn't look so deep, but actually... Oh, and... and ah, so maybe half a meter and quite some current. So I'm now at the other side, which I thought might look interesting. So let's get down. So you see those rocks here? the trees in the background. They might be interesting, but I'm gonna have a look through, the, through my cell phone. And I have to stop recording here so I can use my cell phone. 
Okay, I hope it's not too loud here with the water, but if you see what I see, those rocks here lead nicely into the view. Then this tree, this tree, and having the water rush around it. So if I get lower, I have some nice stream going here. So with the wide angle lens, this might actually look nice. Okay, I hope you saw that there is potential, especially with those rocks and the water rushing around. But to be sure, I now have to get the camera and take a closer look through the wide angle lens. So that's usually the next step. I think I'm gonna bring over my equipment to this side of the river so I'm more flexible before, because first I not use the tripod right away. I first have to do what I did with my cell phone now with the camera. So really seeing if there's a composition to be had. So that's a lot of steps until I finally take out the tripod. But it's worth it in the end because you don't want to be fumbling around here in such river areas with your equipment right from the beginning. Sometimes if you put your camera on the tripod too early, you miss compositions and also you might slip and yeah, then everything falls into the water, which is not so good. So take your time as with the scouting. First have a look without camera, then bring in the camera and finally tripod and fine tune your composition. So let's get the equipment over. So you just saw me uh, using the camera, getting low, trying to find the composition, which is worth shooting. And also through the wide angle lens, it still looks nice. So I'm gonna give it a try. It will not be my best waterfall or river photo I've ever taken, but it's a good photo, I think, and worth putting in the effort now. But first, what I notice is there's some, uh, for, uh, some wood lying around, so a branch, and yeah, I'm gonna just put it out of the river because it's better than having to photoshop it out later. Much quicker than doing the cloning. Okay, so now I'm using the tripod and Actually, I first put the camera onto the tripod, attach the filters and do this out in the dry and then I move in. Okay, I now have my camera on the tripod and I already fine-tuned the composition so I can quickly talk you through the composition. So, I have put the camera quite low and sorry for the 16 to 9 crop but there's a little bit more to the left and right but I have it put very low so I have this white water but then something of those darker foreground rocks to uh, yeah, close the composition because if the water would be go going down here if I would have the camera a little higher then this white water would create a negative space down at the bottom which draws the viewer and having this little darker part with some streaks of water this provides some nice texture there at least that's my idea. Then we have the rocks leading in from the left, going here around and then rocks again. And what's important is that the water can flow around this. And also we have some water in the middle ground. So ideally I could have gone a little higher also. You can see with the GoPro, but there's no water streaming through those rocks. So it's not so important. So when I go down, those rocks melt together. So they become like one mass of rocks. But in this case, it's okay, I think, because it provides a nice line here, a nice diagonal. And then obviously we have the trees, also three trees and a lot of greenery. So no bright sky, which breaks up the composition in the top. So I think it looks quite nice. I'm not yet sure. It's always hard to tell on the little display, but yeah, we'll later see in Photoshop or in, in Lightroom when we look closely at the photos. But now taking the photos, Let's first stop to record here. So for taking the photos, I think I'm at 30 mil or something, quite low and quite close to the foreground. So I definitely need focus stacking. So my usual workflow is when I photograph rivers, I have bracketing active, so plus and minus two. 
and then I focus stack. So I focus to the foreground, two second timer, three exposures, bracketing, the camera does it automatically. Then I focus to some rocks in the middle ground here. So just going along the line of rocks and doing a few focus stacks. I think for this year I need like four to be on the safe side. So I'm shooting at f9.5 and as I said, zoomed in the, the range of uh, things that are sharp is reduced. So then most important also for the background, we have some trees, some leaves, they might move. So I'm at like two, two seconds or three seconds if I shoot at ISO 100. So I also add in some high ISO shots. So going to ISO 800 to make sure if there's some movement, I can later blend in the leaves from the high ISO shot. And that's also important for the foreground. If you saw the white water, if I expose it too long, it's just a mass of white water. But if I use like ISO 400 or 800, do a shorter exposure of maybe one fourth of a second or 0 0.3, I will retain some of, the, yeah, some of the structure there. At least that's my idea. And yeah, we'll let us see what, what I got. So I take many photos now, focus stacking, bracketing, high ISO shots, gathering all the information, all the raw data, and then we head into Lightroom yeah, and see what comes out of it, if it's actually a good photo. Because I'm a little rushed, it's getting dark quite quickly. It's already late, I'm tired, so I might make mistakes, but at least that's my workflow. And if I stick to it, ah, normally there should come something out of it. We'll see. <laughs> One more thing, nearly forgot to mention. Important piece of equipment. You need some wipes. If you're shooting close to the water, they will always get some drops onto the lens and you need to wipe those. So it's important to put them into your, yeah, into your pockets. And I'm using some bamboo cloth and I put some links into the description. They are very good, also very important. I use a polarizer. When I shoot rivers, that's important to remove the reflections. And especially with those green rocks, they are wet. And if I use the polarizer, the colors really pop. And I'm just using the color, uh, Casa polarizer without putting in any ND filters today. It's quite dark, but the polarizer is really a must. So don't forget polarizer and put in some wipes so you can clean it between the shots. Okay, but now it's time to take the photos.